In this video, we're going to learn about file permissions and file ownership. There's only two commands and there's three sets of ownership things that we can set and we can set them one of three ways. It shouldn't be difficult, but it's kind of cool. And at the end, I'll show you something that's not included in the Linux essentials objectives, but it's really cool. Octal notation. Ho, ho, ho. We'll still use the same tools. It's just a cooler kid way of setting permissions on a file. But first of all, what does a permission string look like and how do we decipher what it means? I'm glad you asked. So I have a screenshot here, and this is actually just a clip of a Linux box where I typed ls minus L on the command line to see a couple of files here. And the part that we want to pay attention to is this section right here. Now the rest of it hopefully makes sense. This is the owner. Uh, this is the group that owns the file or the group that is assigned to the file. Uh, this is the date and time. And then this is the file name itself. But this is the permission string and it's separated into some sections. So the very first section right here or right up here is the type. Now this is either going to be a dash like it is in, in all the examples below here, or it could be a D for directory. And we've actually covered this before in different videos, but that first field right here determines what type of file it is. Now there are other more complicated files or could be uh, pipes and things like that. But for the most part, it's either going to be a dash or a D and the dash just means a regular file and a D means a directory. Now, the next nine fields are separated into three parts and these determine the actual permissions on the file. The first three fields stand for read, write, and execute. And so you can either have an R, a W, or an X, or any combination of R and a blank, like a dash right there, and an X, or you could have, and it's the same for the group and the other fields here. So we could have like dash, dash, execute, read, dash, execute, which I guess is the same as the first one I did there. So we'll change that up. Uh, it's either going to be a dash or the letter, right? I mean, you're never going to have like an R in this field over here. That's just, that's nonsensical. That doesn't actually mean anything. It's either on or off the permission field for every one of these fields in the nine sections. And then of course the three sections mean the user who is spelled out right here has read access but they do not have write access, meaning they can't write to it. And it's an executable file itself. Now it's a little bit different, whether it's a file like this with the dash, or if it's a directory with a D in that first field, because executable on a directory, well, that doesn't really even make a whole lot of sense. Like, what would that even mean? Well, for a directory executable means can CD into it, right? So that's how a, a, an executable bit or an executable field is correlated to something that is a directory. It just means that you can CD into the directory if you have this permission, uh, the execute permission for your particular user. And whether you are the user that has that permission or your group has that permission. And the other three here are everybody else on the system who is not either the user or the group assigned to that file. So this means anybody else on the system. So anybody on the system is going to be able to execute this directory, which means anybody on the system is going to be able to CD or change into that directory. Hopefully that makes sense. What I'm actually talking about here, you determine based on three things, the user's permission, the group's permission, and everybody else's permission on the system, what you can and can't do to a file. Of course, reading it means you can't see the content, or you can see or you can't see the contents. Write means you can either write to it or not write to it, and then execute. Like I said, it's either executable like a program if it's a file, or you can CD into it if it's a directory. All right, get rid of all this silliness here. So let's just do a couple more on here. If this is a dash, and this is a uh, read, write, execute. This is read, nothing, nothing, and nothing, nothing, nothing. That would mean that whatever file this happens to be, the person who owns it, so like in the case of the file named cat, S Powers, who is the owner, would be able to read to it, would be able to write to it, and would be able to execute the file because that's the permission that we have drafted 
right here. Now, anybody in the S powers group is going to be able to read the contents of the file because this field right here is set. This bit is turned on for that field. So that means anybody in the S powers group, even if it's not the user S powers is going to be able to read the contents of the file, but they will not be able to write to the file and they will not be able to execute the file. And then anybody else in the system who is both not Sean powers and or not S powers and not in the S powers group, they're not going to be able to see any of the contents of the file. They're not going to be able to write into the file and they're not going to be able to execute the file because these are all just dashes. So let's actually go and look at this on the command line so we can see it in practice. So I'm here on the command line and if I do ls dash L, well, look at these very familiar looking files, right? The, this is the screenshot that I took and sure enough, we have these various files and let's see if we can figure out the permissions. So this is read, write, execute for the user S powers. It's read and execute for the anybody in the group S powers and anybody on the entire system can execute the file so they could execute this program called cat, but they could not read the contents of it and they could not write contents to it. All right, this one down here. And sometimes these don't make a whole lot of sense, but we'll, we'll go through and say exactly what the permissions are saying. So here the owner or the user S powers has read access. They can't write to it, but they have execute access. Anybody in the S powers group is going to be able to write to it and execute it, but not read it. Now that's a really weird permission string, write and execute is kind of weird, uh, but that's what this is actually saying is going on here. But since I'm in the S powers group as the S powers user, I would still be able to write to it because the gr I have the permissions via my group assignment to be able to write to it. And, use, and then over here, uh, they can't read to it, but they can write to it and they can execute it again, just like the other. Normally what happens is you will get something like this file where the user has the most access. People in the group have possibly the same or slightly less access. And then the other users on the system will have very limited access to a file. That's generally how it goes. But I wanted to show you some wonky ones like this because it's possible to set permission strings in any way that you want. And this is actually what it looks like. And then down here, the user has read write access. The group members have no access at all. And then everybody else in the system has read and execute. So that effectively means that this doesn't mean anything because everybody else in the system has read and execute, right? So again, it can be nonsensical, but you can still set those permissions. And then thing two here, uh, looks like it's executable by the owner, executable by the group, but nobody else in the system is going to be able to execute the program thing two. Now to change them, you use the program called CH mod. Okay, so I'll often say when we're learning together, schmod, and what you can say, user, group, other, plus, execute, thing, two. And now if we do ls minus l, what we should see is that it took the user, the group, and the other fields, like the sections, and it added the executable flag to that file. And sure enough, down here, it added it, including the last one, which up here did not have that execute flag set. Now it does. And you can do minus, you could do ch mod user group minus X comma other plus read, write, execute thing two. And now if we look at it, it should have done exactly that. So user and group, it, it subtracted or it took away the X field. And that's what it did. It took that away and it took that away up here. And so now user and group has nothing, but everybody on the system. So other was added, read, write, execute, read, write, execute right there. And that effectively means anybody on the system can do anything they want with it because read, write, execute is set for that. I uh, think for the, for anybody else on the system, again, this is a little nonsensical, but nonetheless, we're able to set it in the CH mod or schmod is the way that we actually do that. And you can string them together like this, separated by commas. So you can do a very complex string and have it look exactly how you want. All right. Now, the other tool that we need to use is ch own. And oddly enough, even though I hear almost everybody say and pronounce the word schmod, I don't think I've ever heard anybody pronounce the word 
chone or C H. Everybody just says C H O N when they're talking about the C H O N command. So I don't know why. Maybe it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. But C H O N is how you change the ownership of the file or change the group assignment of the file itself. Now, since we're currently the S Powers user, in order to change it to somebody else, we need to be root. So sudo C H O N Bob the file cat put in my password and now if we do ls minus l we should see that the owner of the file is now bob and it's still in the s powers group because all we did is change the ownership or the owner of of the file not the group now we can change the group with chown and to do that we would say sudo chown we'll say suzy and then a period and then the group that you want to change it to. So let's say suzy.suzy, the file cat. And now if we do ls minus l, we'll see the user and the group is suzy for the file cat. All right, and we don't have to do both at once. We can do like we did up here, just do the owner. If you don't put anything after it and you just put an owner, it's going to change just the owner like it did here. Uh, you can do both owner.group, or you could actually do sudo chown dot bob cat and now it's just going to change the group because we put a period there and anything after the period is considered the group that you want to change the ownership to and so now this is owned by suzy that's the user when we're setting the first three fields here the user is suzy and bob is the group permissions that we're setting here is for anybody in the bob group now, hopefully that makes sense and and you can do just fine using the schmod and then the letters pluses and minuses but and, and so i guess if you want to stop there hey great like and subscribe and click i'll see you the next time but if you want to get a little bit nerdier even though this isn't going to be on the linux essentials exam i want to show you how to do octal notation for setting permissions on a file it's just kind of cool it requires a little little bit of math but if you're looking up instructions on how to set things up online you're probably going to see this a lot so it is it is really important to know but maybe not for the very first entrance into the linux world it's your call but that's what we're going to do right now so i have the same thing set up again where we have you know this is where it would be like the file and then uh read write execute read write nothing and read dash dash okay so this is our permission string for this particular file now what octal notation does instead of using a big like g o plus r x comma u plus w comma all that stuff you can actually set a permission using numbers and the way it works is the read value is worth four points we'll say a write is worth two points and an execute is worth one point now what do i mean by points well over here the read is turned on so we're going to say it's four the write is turned on so we're going to say plus two and the x is turned on so we're going to say plus one we add that together and we get four plus two plus one equals seven okay the next one here there is an R that's active, so that's four. The W is active, so plus two. This is not active, okay? There is no execute here, so it's just plus zero. So four plus two plus zero is six. And then over here, we have an R is active, so it's going to be four. But there's nothing here in this field, so that's plus zero. And there's nothing here in this field, so that's also plus zero. So if we add all that together, we get four. So if we wanted to immediately change a file to this permission string, what we would do is say schmod seven, six, four, and then the name of the file. And that is going to give us the string rwx, rw dash, r dash dash, all right? And we do that because every time there's an R, there's four points. Every time there's a W, there's two points. Every time there's an X, there's one. And if there's a not, then it is a zero. All right. So that means like if it was R dash X, well, we would change this. We would say, okay, there's one in the R. So that's four plus there's nothing in this one. So zero plus, and there's a one here. So that would mean that it is 
five. So then we would, to change it to this, we would say schmod765 in the name of the file. Does that make sense? That's called octal notation. And it's just a really quick way to set the permissions for a file without going through a long string of pluses and minuses, R's and X's, the G, O's and U's uh, in order to set a string. It's just a shortcut. You don't have to know how to do it, but it's really awesome. So let's try that really quick before we finish and then we'll be done. So first of all, let's do a simple one. Let's do the H mod zero, zero, zero thing two. And now if we do LS minus L, well, look what we did. So thing two is here and now we've done zero, zero, zero. So that means there's nothing in any of the fields, right? It's zero plus zero plus zero and then zero plus zero plus zero. So all of these are zeros and that's what we ended up with. So let's say we wanted to change this to that initial thing that we, that we said it was. So, um, actually, no, let's change it to what it was right up here. Let's see if we can change it back to that. Well, for that, we would do the H mod zero because the first three, there's nothing there. The second three, there's nothing there. So that's going to be another zero. And then here we have four plus two plus one. So that's going to be seven. Schmod 007 thing two. And now if we do LS minus L, Look at that. It's back to exactly where it was and we can set any fields we want like that. So in our example over here, let's see if we can do RWX, RW blank, R blank X. So schmod seven, six, five, and let's see if it gives us that string right there. Schmod seven, six, five, and we'll do hat. Okay. We'll change it on the file hat. And now ls minus l and let's see if that's what happened we have read write execute read write no execute and then read no write and execute exactly like it was on our slide and it was just one simple command using octet notation if that was a little bit too deep or it was like, well, what's with all the math adding R's and W's? That's okay. Like I said, this is kind of an advanced thing that's not necessarily something you need to know right now, but I really like octal notation. I just think it's cool. And so I wanted to show you how to do that in case you wanted to be like a schmod superstar and um, change the <laughs> permissions on files all over the place. The one thing that I didn't cover super, super uh, in depth is that in order to change ownership, you have to have root privilege. So remember, you have to use sudo if you're going to ch own a file to somebody else's user or group anyway learn everything including octal notation do what you love and remember always 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 be kind i'll see you at the next video actually our next video is the last video in this series on linux essentials and then we will have completed the series and if you want you can take the exam but until then i'll see you tomorrow tomorrow i'll see you at the next video